Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's q and I'm here with Jody from Someday Art Co. Welcome, Jody. Hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and Jody is a fellow artist from Montreal, which is really close to Ottawa. It's only like an hour and a half, but we've never met in person. So at least this video will be a good start. <laughs> yeah. We need to. <laughs> So this week, we're going to be talking about how to find and hone your own style in calligraphy, which is awesome because I get that question all the time. And I know people really struggle with it. I think especially in like this day and age of seeing everybody's stuff on Instagram, you have like style ADD and you can't choose what you want to do. So I think this will be a really valuable conversation for everybody. But um, before we get started, do you want to just jump in and tell us who you are, what you do, and how you got started with all of this kind of stuff? Yes, sure. So, hey guys, I'm Jody, um, and yes, I'm from Montreal, so I'm very, very cold right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, so basically, I have been doing calligraphy for about, I guess, almost four years, really, 2015. I can't do math. Um, and... Uh, but before that, I was, I've always basically been an artist my whole life. Like I would consider myself like a drawer first and a calligrapher kind of second because art has been my thing my whole life. And uh, about 13 years ago, I was in college, which makes me feel very, very old. Um, but uh, in, in Quebec, it's very weird. We have this thing where it's like, it's called stage up. And it's, I mean, you probably know about it, but um, you know, you, fit, so you finish high school after grade 11 and then you do college and then you do university. So you do like double college. It's very strange. Um, so my college program was called illustration and design it was my first one and uh, i was in that program um, because i loved drawing and uh, i was learning about illustration and the teachers in that program put a huge emphasis on finding uh, your own style and making sure that you had your own unique uh, style and creative voice um, and the reason for that is just because it's um, it's a lot more appealing as an artist or for clients to find you as an artist if you have like a kind of unique point of view and a, and a unique style and something a little bit different and exclusive to offer. Um, so we were kind of, that was really drilled into us was like, you have to have a style, but at the same time, we were learning everything in such a technical way and like really having to follow the rules in such a way that like, because obviously you have to learn the rules first before you can break them. But at the same time, it was like, so intense and our work was like so corrected and everything that it we didn't really have much room to show our style and I personally felt like the style was like being beaten out of me um <laughs> so in retrospect looking at that I think and now that I've sort of started teaching others um you know after a few years of calligraphy once I started teaching calligraphy to other people finally it took me a while to kind of like work up the courage to start teaching um but once I did I realized that people tend to have like an inherent style from the first time they pick up a pen and I so and now to me it makes a lot more sense to teach people the rules but at the same time teach them that it's okay to break them and as long as they're you know it I guess analyzing their work and exploring and, and learning the rules first in order to break them properly in a sense. Um, I think it's better to ha kind of have both um, both types of education running parallel. So like learning the rules, but also learning how to make it your own. And I think that would have benefited me back in the day because I totally end up dropping out of that program <laughs> and switching into visual arts, um, which was like happy, fun art land. And I was the queen of visual arts. I went from like, like being like just beaten down <laughs> like every day to just being like the like art queen and uh that's what I graduated in and it was fabulous so I don't regret that choice at all um but anyway so then fast forward many years uh later and I took my first calligraphy class and uh I realized very quickly that I loved it and that I wanted to uh incorporate it into um like the business that I wanted to start I was already I wanted to like start making art um, as a side business and then eventually a full-time business because I hated my job and I wanted to quit. Um, and I fell in love with it so quickly and I realized that I wanted to do it for work, but I didn't want my work to look the same as my teacher's. Um, and my teacher's name is Joy and you can find her at Imagine Joy on Instagram and she is wonderful and extremely talented um, and has been incredibly open and um, like really like embraced like me <laughs> like when I told her that I wanted to uh, to start doing calligraphy like she was 
amazing and like, you know, hired me a couple of times. She's recommended me for jobs. Um, but I really made sure that I worked on my style so much that it would be very, very different from hers because since we're in the same city, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't stepping on her toes and I wanted to make sure that I had my own very unique style that was completely different from hers. So yeah, that's who I am and that's why I care about having uh, a unique style and want to help other people find theirs. So That's awesome. I feel like we have a similar story with our teachers. So I learned from Joanne from In Detail and she has become kind of the same thing for me, which is awesome. But again, her and I have very different styles. And so I think it would be a little bit different if you taught somebody and they straight up did the exact same style or copied everything that you do and they're trying to get the same clients as you, then it's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, then it gets awkward really fast. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it's, it's important to be mindful of, you know, your community and um, especially, yeah, if you can see yourself going, you know, after the same types of jobs or the same types of um, clients or whatever, you definitely want to make sure that your style looks very different from the other people in your, in your city or in your, um, you know, who are, who are close to you, just because like something I always try to think of or like give as an example is like, if you removed pricing from the equation, or if you removed other factors from the equation and clients are just looking at who's style that they prefer like that's the best way that feels the best getting a job that's just based on what your work looks like you know it's on, on merit and on like what style suits the client best and not on you know it's just sort of you want to make sure that you're all different and that you all have something different to offer totally I totally agree and I think it's interesting too because it's not only about the client side I think a lot of people who get into calligraphy want to just get a lot of followers and grow this big following on Instagram but it's the same thing like the if you have the exact same style as somebody else then you're kind of like diluting your brand and you're not gonna get as many followers as you would if you had like a specific thing that you were known for and people come to your feed and it's very obvious what you're what you're all about yeah totally, totally. yeah so, okay. So say somebody, I, we're just going to jump right in because I'm excited. So say somebody has like just finished learning the basics. Say they took show me your drills, shameless plug, and they have learned, <laughs> they've learned all the basics of calligraphy. Maybe they've done like the lowercase alphabet or something, but they're starting to work on stylizing and yeah. think about stylizing. Um, where would you kind of point people? What would be the first step that you would tell people to do? Yeah, so I do try to break it down into these four four steps, basically, to um, starting to find your style and work on your style. Um, first one being practice, for sure. Um, but I like to call it more of like a mindful practice, because I think that that's where, yeah, we tend to get maybe stuck, like having our work look like the material that we're learning from is if all we do is practice exactly what we see. Um, so I like to, to, to I like to tell people <laughs> to, um, I've had too much coffee today, I'm like jittering. Um, and I like to tell people to kind of set up, um, like a, turn it into kind of like a self-care exercise in a way and like make your practice really reflective of who you are um, so that you can inject as much of your personality into your work as possible. Um, so not just practicing what you're given, but finding ways to put, to inject things that you love into your practice. So one of my favorite practice exercises is this alphabet practice exercise, which Joy had showed us back in the day, um, which is basically where you run through the whole alphabet um, with one word for each letter and you pick uh, like under a theme. So like you pick something that you love. That's what I like to do. Um, so either, you know, like a movie and you list all of the characters or a book, like your favorite, your all time favorite book and you like, list the characters in alphabetical order or, um, what I used to do. And like my like benchmark for like what I do all the time is Lana Del Rey song titles. Um, <laughs> and I like, so when I first learned, I would like, yeah, I would set the scene. I would like pour myself a big glass of red wine and put on some, yeah, big old glass of red wine and <laughs> light a candle and like um, put on some Lana Del Rey or some other like emotional music because I'm just like a huge emo and I love to feel my feelings. Um, <laughs> and I love for that to come across in my work. So, um, or, you know, put on a movie in the background that's like, you know, your favorite movie or something like that. But basically just set up, um, like I like to like just picture it as like a little bubble of like things that you love. And so that 
kind of your personality and your passion and um, the things that make you you and the things that give you your own unique point of view and your own values and stuff like that. It really ends up getting like subconsciously transferred into the work, which is really fun. So um, it doesn't have to be some like big, deep emotional thing. That's just who I am. It can be, <laughs> you know, if you want to have friends on in the background and practice like, you know, funny friends quotes or stuff like that. Um, but it's just really making it, taking the uh, calligraphy that you're learning and then making it about yourself and practicing in a way that allows you to inject yourself into the practice so that's my like kind of very woo woo way of like telling people how to work on their on their craft um no I love that because I I I mean I even struggle with that I I sometimes I'll just sit down and be like okay I have to create something like I have to practice you know but it's not I'm never like I never just sit down and put myself in that mindset or like put something on that would relax me and I can like already figure I already know exactly what that scenario would be so I just need to do that like I, I it's brilliant I've never done that <laughs> oh you have to yeah it's so fun it really makes it like bringing it back to, and I think it's hard too, because especially since it's your, like, it's your livelihood. And when you start doing it for work, it then it kind of becomes work. So you have to like, bring it back to what it was when you first learned and like how it's like, a it can be a lot of people learn calligraphy because it's so relaxing and because it's like therapy in a way. So um, when you bring it back to that point, and like, unplug, like, that's another thing that's huge, like, you know, putting away the phone or like putting away um Facebook or Instagram or whatever just like pretend it doesn't exist for like an hour and just create whatever is inside of you oh it's so cheesy but anyway <laughs> but it's true because I feel like so many people when they're trying to learn calligraphy or trying to practice will have their phone right beside them looking at other people's stuff and kind of trying to figure like, oh, how should I draw this J or whatever, which is good to a certain extent. Sometimes if you need help with it or you need a little bit of inspiration, but I love the just shut the phone down, put it away and see what comes out. Yes, totally. It's just really hard for a lot of people to do that. Yeah, it totally is. And it's hard for me too. Like I, you know, I, I always try to find the time, but then like weeks go by and it, and I haven't found the time. So it's, it's important and it's, it's an effort. It's like with any kind of like, I guess, extracurricular or, you know, it's like we always kind of put ourselves last, but you have to kind of with, with this kind of thing, it's important to put yourself first and your creative creative development um, <laughs> first and, you know, really focus on it and, and make it about, again, like self-care. It's like a nice little way to treat yourself. And I think along those lines, the same kind of thing, like part of that is knowing that no one else is ever going to see it. Yes. Yeah. I think is really big because otherwise you kind of like censor what you're putting on the page and you don't really like just go with the flow. Um, I, I, I struggle big time with that now because I, I feel like everything I make should be postable on Instagram just so, you know, I can get another post on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But when you're starting out, like just, I mean, maybe your mom will see it or your, your spouse, but like, who cares? I mean, if I look I could look at the work I did at the very beginning and just like, <laughs> I still don't want people to see it. So just try and remember that people don't have to see it and it's way less stress that way. That's it. Yeah. Not everything has to go on Instagram and I'm yeah, totally guilty of that too. I'm like, how many angles am I going to shoot this from later or whatever? But back in the day, like, yeah, like none, a lot, most of that stuff hasn't seen the light of day unless I've like now done it as like a comparison post kind of thing. But yeah, like I used to practice, like I've got pages and pages and pages of practice that have never been on social media. So it's like, it's, it's interesting. Like it, it's a hard thing to, for people to create without thinking of that end game of like social media, but like, just don't think about it. Just do it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and back to the, back to the not having your phone thing. I think that can be stressful for a lot of people too, because especially in the beginning, if you're just learning how to make all these letter forms and you like really don't have an idea in your head of what it should look like, should in quotes, mm -hmm. I think that can be hard. So I remember one thing I used to do when I was first starting out was I would find somebody's letters who inspired me or whatever. I'd find something, you know, I, I found a post where I really liked that B. Yeah. Then I would take that B and I would study that B and kind of think about what it was about the style that I liked and then try, shut it down, put the phone away and try and make the rest of the alphabet on my own. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then there were other days where like I literally couldn't figure those things out on my own. So I would actually just find someone else's thing and copy it. Yeah. That's fine as long as you're not sharing it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. Yeah, I've had that question a lot come up because of like this whole, you know, you want to try to create original content and put it out there. But yeah, it's like it's very normal when you're learning something to copy someone else's work, but it's just, yeah, you can't, you just don't, that's not the stuff that you share. Like you share it once you've been working on it enough to turn it into your own style. But yeah, totally normal to like go and look for inspiration and, and, and learn different ways of constructing letters from other people. That's fine. Yeah. And it was always just like, it was always just little things from each person's letters too. You know, you'd, you'd see somebody's B and you'd look at it and go, oh, I really like how they made that loop a bit bigger on the top. And then you'd see somebody else's like S and you'd say, oh, I like the way they carried that upstroke through and all these things. And so it's not necessarily all from other people, but you're constantly taking in ideas from other people and reiterating and you can't you can't just remember those things you have to actually put your pen to paper and try them out yourself and see whether it actually works in your hand you know yeah, yeah exactly yeah that's it seeing if it feels natural to you or if it feels wrong because like what works for someone else might work for you and might help you develop and then or what, what works for them might not work for you at all so yeah you have to try and and try new things yeah, yeah. um I think another really important thing in the practice point, and we'll move on from practice for in a second to your point number two, but is to put dates on each page. Yes. Yeah. So um, I love doing that. Like I have all my stuff um, from back in the day. It's dated with like the month and the year at least. Um, so that way you can look through over time and see how your style has evolved and how your skills have improved. Um, that's huge. And it's also really hilarious. Sometimes. It's really hilarious and really like encouraging at the same time when you come back to it in a year and letter the same word or whatever and you see like a huge improvement. Yeah, exactly. That's why I always do my Lana, basically my Lana Del Rey alphabet. That's my one. Like I do lots of alphabets even now just for fun sometimes, but that like I always do that like more or less the same song titles and then I look at them over time, which I will show you guys a little later because <laughs> I have them here. Actually, no, I have my Harry Potter ones here, I think. I think, I, I think you should just show us. Okay. Just show us now. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay, well, I have my, this is, remember I learned copper plate in the beginning, so it's very fancy compared to what I do now. Um, I have my little, my little Harry Potter character name, if you can see. Yes, and they look like, they look so good. Those don't look like beginner copper plates. <laughs> so, November 2015, well, it's funny because, like, I don't think I could do this now. Like, I don't think I could do, like, that formal, like, the, these kind of capitals I couldn't do but if you look close there's plenty of they're they're so wobbly I don't know how if you can see how wobbly everything is no they look so good <laughs> no half um but anyway so no these are my like my earlier practice but I if you look at some of my other like I should have brought down the a really you know here I'll do that for you okay <laughs> I have my old one here somewhere hold on uh, this is, I bought at the starting, I bought this like huge Rhodia pad that is huge. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I just like loved sitting at my dining room table and playing with it. Um, so this was when I was doing pointed pen too. Yay. <laughs> and, but it gets even better when I started using brush pens. Look at the word football. Oh my gosh. I love it. Look at that fancy, that T has so much attitude. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God. So good. And like, and there's so many instances where I spelled things wrong or just like forgot a stroke. And then this page is even, is the best. I think this is when I was trying to come up with my own logo. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> and again, ever is like sassy. Oh my God. I love it. Oh man. So yeah. funny. Um, but I didn't date these. So I, I have a rough idea of when they were, I just, I wish there was a date on them and I could go back and do the same thing again. But yeah, yeah. That's it. I always tell people when they're just starting, cause it's something, yeah, you don't necessarily think of, but it's great to know like exactly when it's from. Um, but no, I think that's great. And but you know, it's so cool. Cause you can totally see like that, like fun, like bounciness that your style has, like even in those early pieces. So mm -hmm. Okay, so practice. So sit down, deliberately practice, mindfully practice, as Jody would say. Yeah. And kind of, a, I would say, like a mix of the mindful practice and not looking at anyone else's stuff and seeing what comes out. But if you're stuck on that, which I would be because I am not like a sensitive yeah. feeling person, I would want something <laughs> concrete in front of me. So I think it's totally fine to do it both ways. And I would say that 
probably a mix and match of both is the best way to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, not telling you, yeah, you don't have to like blindfold yourself in the dark and then <laughs> only create what's See what comes out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, kind of, but also, yeah, you can totally go and look at actual references. Don't worry, you're allowed. <laughs> okay, so practice is step one. What's step yeah. two? Um, so step two is to analyze, um, which, uh, yeah, sounds sounds like not the most fun and creative thing to do, but it is, I promise. Um, so you'll notice like on my little, um, my practice sheets, how I have these little like red marks in a few places. Um, and that's where I've sort of like gone through. I mean, some of them, I think Joy would like, maybe not these sheets, but like she used to like go through and like circle like technical issues that I needed to fix. Um, but I'll go through and I'll like underline little things that I notice. Um, and I'll either underline them as, things that are technical issues that I could improve upon, like a, a technical skill that just needs work. Or um, I point out little things that might be actually something that I'm doing as a natural stylistic element. Um, so there are, you know, it's hard to tell the difference between those things at first, but the more you start to notice them, like if you go through your work and you can pinpoint a thing that you see often, like for me, um, my example is like, I used to run out of ink all the time. So like, again, it's kind of hard to see, but like here on the, this is Draco for Draco Malfoy, this word here, like, <laughs> running out of ink on the O. Um, and then here on Fenrir again, it happens. But like, you know, these are over the course of pages and pages, it just kept, I kept noticing that that would happen all the time. And uh, it's just something that I couldn't, I mean, that is something you could work on as a technical student technical skill, but I ended up sort of embracing it and um, gradually over time just sort of like going with the flow of like, okay, I'm going to run out of ink, so I might as well just instead of um, trying to fix it all the time and not being able to, I'm just going to start like adding water to my nib and making it into a style, like into like a, like my ink is running out and it's running into another word, so I'll show you what I mean. Like an ombre kind of thing. Like an ombre, yes. Yeah. So now this is my, this is my Lana, Lana Del Rey alphabet here. And you can oh see yeah, it. you can see it in the word minutes really yeah well. exactly. yeah it like it flows from like darker to light, um, and I do it in like different degrees on different um, yeah here I think maybe there's better like, these are these are wine brands <laughs> my, an alphabet of my favorite wines because I have twenty six favorite wines <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I kind of took that little um that little element and turned it into more of like adopted it into my style. Whereas uh, something that I noticed repeatedly um, that is more something that I wanted to work on is that actually there's a lot of like, I had a lot of shaky lines, like a lot of, again, like you can't really see like in the screen, but like here, like in charity, you can see it's like very shaky. Mm -hmm. So, um, and how I improved that is, well, not today, but in general, drinking less coffee before practicing um, and always making sure that I eat before I do calligraphy, which I don't know if you do this, but like, I, I like can't do it if I'm on an empty stomach. <laughs> so, I can't do most things on an empty stomach. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, so I just sort of like started to always make sure that like I stop drinking coffee for a certain amount of time before doing calligraphy and always have a snack. And cause I also just love snacks. I mean, come on. Um, and, uh, also just really work at like kind of going a little bit slower and gradually over time, I still have kind of shaky, shakier letters than probably most, but I try as much as possible to keep a steady hand. And that's something that I just very mindfully worked on over time. So it's not just it's not just analyzing. It's not just looking at it and going, oh, that line's shaky. I got to improve those shakes. It's like, oh, that line's shaky. Why might that line be shaky? Yeah, you know, exactly. it's not. It's kind of like going one level deeper. Yeah, that's it. And like really kind of looking at like, okay, so how can I improve those things that I don't like the look of, and that I, you know, I know that there's got to be a way to make that better. Um, and then looking at things that you're maybe do naturally, like maybe your letters are all really, really close together, or maybe they're all really, really far apart and thinking of like, okay, how can I turn that into an element of my style? So like, maybe you just have like a really elongated, like very like wispy long style then if your letters are all really naturally far. So it's kind of like trying to figure out what, what's inherent and like positive and cool and can be like turned into something stylistic and what is, you know, could. a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
I always, I always tell people too, in the beginning, when you, if you find something you like, like say my example earlier with the bigger loop on the B, the bigger ascending loop or ascending loop, however you say it. Um, say you find something like that, that you like, I always encourage people to like push it to the limit. So go exaggerate it like way bigger. So make a tiny little bottom part of your B in a huge loop and then kind of like pair it back until you find that exact sweet spot that you really like it. So playing like with tiny things like that and just having pages and pages of like random letters and random shapes and stuff like that, they eventually all start to kind of filter in and stick in your brain what it is you like about them. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Like once you, you, and that actually kind of leads into our next, <laughs> our next point. So it's first practice, then analyze, then experiment. So once you find something like that, that you're like, oh, like maybe I want to play with that scale um, in your letters, then you, you start doing that and experimenting with different kinds of scale, like you just said, and um, seeing which one feels the most natural. So it's really only, it's like through practicing that you, um, you know, you develop your skills and then through analyzing that you see um, what you might be doing naturally and then through experimenting, really landing on what you do best and what works the best for you. So yeah, exactly. You have to kind of like experiment and see what fits, you know, um, so, and also experimenting with like different mediums and which ones like lend themselves to what you like to do naturally. So if, yeah, if you're going to, like, I love that. I love playing with like, like you said, like that's such a great exercise to like take it, a B is like a perfect letter to experiment with, to like do a really big loop and then a little tiny like oval on the bottom. You're so much better with the technical terms. I'm like a big loopy thing and a little loopy thing. <laughs> this is why you teach the technical stuff that I just like, I try to talk about that in my workshops and I'm just like, just make it loopy. Anyway. Just um, do what comes in your soul. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should teach a workshop together. Yeah. We have the best of both worlds. Exactly. That would be great. <laughs> okay, so practice, analyze, experiment, yeah. and then? And then repeat. So basically, um, you want to just keep doing that over and over again um, because the thing is, your style is always going to be changing. So even if you feel like <laughs> just kind of like – like, so, like, sorry, not sorry, but once you feel like you find it, it's going to change again. So it's like you can get there eventually where you're like, oh, my God, I love my style. And you can still be doing that style, but gradually over time, it's naturally going to change anyways. So I like to, especially like before new kind of milestones, like let's say like before you go into wedding season, if you're really focusing on doing weddings as a calligrapher, you can go through this process again of like, analyzing your work and experimenting and just kind of setting yourself up for like what's my work going to look like this wedding season how am I going to write the word welcome you know which is my most hated word by the way I don't know about <laughs> but I don't know why I do welcome signs because I hate writing the word welcome but anyway um so you want in, in Montreal you could write bienvenue yes I love writing bienvenue bienvenue is gorgeous these are my favorite but welcome like well I think I'm I think this year I'm gonna do it only in like a sans serif lettering like I'm just and then names names can be in calligraphy but like welcome I just I hate it um so anyway <laughs> kind of going through your style and like being like okay this is where my style is at now and understanding that it's better and it's different than it once was and then eventually it will also be different and it probably will be better like it's kind of funny because it's like it's like with any kind of skill the more you work on it the more you're gonna it's just gonna get better over time and it's like a muscle like you still have to keep constantly exercising it and working on it like I find that oddly enough like because calligraphy has been my focus for the past two years and even though I'm more of like a drawer um I look back on my sketchbooks from like 2011 2012 when I was studying fine arts which I also dropped out of, um, <laughs> I, my style, my drawing style was like so much better than it is now. Like it was so strong and it was so unique. And now when I draw stuff, I have a harder time making it look like mine, but it's because I haven't been regularly practicing it and analyzing it and experimenting. So you have to kind of keep up, um, keep keep up the process and keep repeating it so that you stay your skills stay sharp and so that you stay kind of like constantly challenging yourself to evolve as well that's actually a really uh good 
point because someone uh, had submitted a question beforehand for us to answer. Um, and it was Courtney and she asked, how often do you find your styles change? So for instance, did you used to use a certain style and adjust it according to trends, which I think is an interesting topic too. When we're talking, if we start talking about the trends. Yeah, totally. So I, I mean, definitely I started with copper plate. Um, so my style completely evolved with that as a starting point and gradually I just got more and more like modern, um, which I think copper plate is a really good starting point because it is like so much more like, like structured. Like if you start trying to learn, um, I don't know, like some, some very, like if you start going too whimsical too quickly, like it can get tricky like you do kind of want to have a good foundation of like technical stuff um but in terms of like how it evolves I don't think it should evolve according to trends it should evolve according to like your own aesthetic um and your own skills and how they develop so it's like try to I would say try to ignore trends to an extent but keep aesthetic in mind I think there's there's an interesting kind of balance there too like a good example would be uh, when I first learned calligraphy, I learned how to do the more traditional looking R. So I'm just going to whip out a brush pen and do it on this paper and hold it up because it'll be easier. So I used to do, this is going to be like a really messy one, but just to give you the idea. I used to do my R's like this. Is that, is that backwards or is that normal? Okay. So I used to do that and that was more like because I learned a more traditional form first and that was what was in my head. And then when I started going on Instagram, everybody was doing their R's like this. Yes, yeah. Totally. Or even like a huge loop on them. Yeah, yeah I have been there. I have done right? That. So then, of course, I started thinking, oh, well, that's like the, the way everybody likes. I should be doing my R's like that. Yeah. Um, and it took me a while to kind of step back and realize like, oh, like, that's popular, but I don't really like the way that looks. And so I've gone back to my more traditional one. Yeah. And so sometimes it goes in cycles where you'll notice the trends and you'll try and do them. And then you just kind of have to be like in tune. If yeah. we're, if we're going to get all sensey again, you have to be in tune with what feels good to you and what, what you actually personally like, because it's better to follow that than trying to follow what the trends are especially on Instagram because they change every five minutes that's exactly it no I 100% agree with everything you just said yes R's man R's and S's those are two that I feel like I'm constantly changing I'm like like I, I started doing mine it's really funny that you say that because the the traditional copper plate R is like well there's two there's like similar to what you showed me I'm wondering if there's I have an example of it here but I don't really but it's more of like a like a little crap do I have a pen artist without a pen anyway um <laughs> so anyway I, I started doing this like the the copper plate r and then i did the exact same thing i went through my like loopy loopy ones let me see i definitely have that somewhere or i don't i why am i why am i a mess anyway um but i have also all that to say i have also gone back to my classic r's that i learned in the beginning because yeah i started feeling like everyone was doing these like big loopy r's and i was like no i don't want my work to look like everybody else's yeah. so it's hard because i feel like there yeah there is this kind of cycle of like this one style is popular and that's what everybody's doing but then everyone kind of maybe at the same time realizes like oh everyone's doing that i don't want to do it so you have to kind of want to try to like obviously be making work that's appealing and that matches the sort of like aesthetic of the time, but you don't want to make work that looks like what everyone else is doing. You want to try to maybe think ahead a little bit and, um, or, or do something that is like what you first learned that you fell in love with first. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting question. And I think that also leads us into the other question that we got. Um, and we touched on this a little bit, but someone asked if it's, if you think it's good to master copper plate or some other traditional forms of calligraphy before starting to break the rules, just so you know the rules before you break them. And I know that I think you and I have like a little bit of a different opinion on this, similar opinion, but a little bit different. So I'd like to hear what you, what you think about that. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I think knowing the rules is important and yeah, I feel like I totally, I think we're like a little bit different page, but same page generally, I guess it's just like, because again of my like emo like my little emotional like artisty like soul and what I what I went through in school it's like I kind of feel like you need to learn the rules but like parallel to that um, 
acknowledge that you're allowed to break them and not like kind of like have that sort of like it's not going to look perfect thing in your mind um and sort of like be learning the rules but also be understanding how you could break them um but no of course i think learning the rules is, is very important and and having a strong foundation from which to stray and start experimenting is is good i think where you're coming from is like you're trying to tell people um learn the basics but don't be afraid that someone's going to come over and like whoosh, like whip you yeah. if you yeah. you know if you try a little loop on your r you know yeah. yeah which which i totally agree with so we are on the same page there i just my opinion and it's always been this since the beginning is that you you have to learn it in order like you have to learn the basic strokes yeah. if you're going to try and do any kind of like the brush modern calligraphy and stuff or else you'll it'll be a mess it's totally. just as simple yeah. as that. No, I, you have I, to I, learn how to do the lowercase letters before you do the uppercase letters because they're harder. And then you want to learn how to do all the lowercase letters, obviously, before you start making words because you won't know how to make words. You know, it all just, it goes really well in sequence. And then there's a, there's a kind of like a specific point that I think everybody reaches where they're like, okay, I'm bored of this same style over and over again. I want to start stylizing it. Yeah. And that's yeah. when you can start that like four step process. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with all of that. And I think that it's, it's you, like, you kind of have to, like, that expression of, like, you have to walk before you can run or fly or whatever it is, um, <laughs> that, like, it, it will be a lot easier to stylize and to um, experiment and make it your own if you understand why the letters look like what they look like, for sure. I definitely think that having a, a nice, strong, like, easing your way in and not just, like, jumping in to, like, because I do, you know, I, I have seen that too, like, you know, the, sometimes people kind of bite off more than they can chew in a sense and try to like master it all at once. And it's like, it, it should be a slow process and it should be, it should take time and it should take a lot of practice, you know, to build that foundation so that you can then start experimenting and getting artsier. But yeah, so I think we're on the same page. Yeah, I see a lot of people like, they'll be like, oh, okay, that's how a brush pen works, light up, hard down. And then they just see someone else's style and try and copy it. But it's going to be a disaster if you haven't figured out like how to make your upstroke not shaky and how to make that like a strong enough downstroke and stuff like that. I think it's, but as it relates to style, I think that it's important to like understand the basics, even if you don't want to ever do copper plate or Spencerian or any of those scripts, it's a good idea to like research them, understand them. And then you can still like apply the the knowledge that you've learned. But yeah, not not ever being afraid of somebody coming over and like chastising you for screwing yeah. something up. Yeah, I think I'm just injecting my own trauma into <laughs> art school like trauma. But anyways, see, I think it well, and it's an interesting point because it's yeah. it's a combination of like your personality and your your background and stuff like that. And what will turn you on to art and what will turn you off from art. You don't ever want to do something that's going to turn you off of it completely. And if that means that you don't want to follow the rules, then don't follow the rules. Yeah. I'd rather you be creating something than being afraid to break rules. You know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, okay. I think those were the only questions that we had submitted ahead of time. Yeah. Um, but I think that the last thing I want to talk about is um, how to avoid, I don't want to say ADD because it's the wrong word, but like when you're on Instagram and you're trying to think about your own style, like how do you avoid jumping from here and jumping you're like, oh, I like that person's style. Oh, I like that person's style. I'm going to try that one. I'm going to try that one. And then never really finding like one that fits you. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're yeah. constantly seeing other things that you want to inject. And it's at some point you have to just stop and try and find your own style. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's super hard. And I find like, I, I struggle with it too. Like the amount of time I'm really actively trying to limit my screen time lately. Cause I find the, yeah, like that little thing now that they've added that on Instagram where you can see how long you spent on it. Like I never want to look at that. And sometimes I accidentally look at it. Yeah. It's horrifying. I don't even know on Instagram itself. Yeah. Oh, don't even go there because it's upsetting. Like I remember one day I accidentally clicked on it. I think it's called, it's like somewhere in the settings and it's like your activity. And I thought oh. it was just going to be like, which posts have I liked recently? You know, so I can go back to them and like look at what I was into or whatever. 
and then it was actually showing me how long I'd been on Instagram and it was like three hours or something. And I was like, I will die. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to be this person. Um, so anyway, ever since that, I've been a lot more like mindful of how much time I spend on it. So, um, I think it's, I think it's great to follow accounts that inspire you, other artists who you look up to, um, and that kind of thing. But I also feel like we all tend to like oversaturate ourselves with other artists that do similar things to what we do. And then we get stuck in the comparison trap and then we feel crappy about ourselves and all that stuff. So I think it's a good idea to sort of set some limits for yourself, either limit than like I mean it's hard because I want you I want people to like support artists and follow them and like you know that kind of stuff but maybe sometimes you can limit the amount of art accounts that you follow and even start to follow other types of artists like it might be useful to follow people who do watercolor or people who like draw or whatever like it might be good to sort of start to not just expose yourself to other calligraphers or lettering artists see what else is out there um and those things will affect your style as well too. Yeah, exactly. Like that's another thing too, is that I, I always recommend like things like traveling or seeing an art exhibition or something like that is huge. And like, it gives you a different kind of inspiration that it, it automatically forces you kind of like outside of your little bubble and like what you're used to seeing and maybe subconsciously recreating, you know, cause it's often people, get inspired and they don't even realize that they've been inspired by something and something just comes out of them and it's kind of become because in the back of their mind they might have seen it on Instagram so like I like to recommend like yeah like follow your favorite artists spend some time on Instagram but again be mindful and make the effort to like go outside and like find other sources of inspiration like I think like I mean not it's like if you not like it's the kind of thing you can just do but like when I I think the most inspiring thing I ever did was like go to Europe like if you <laughs> you can hop on a plane to Europe, do that and go to the Louvre and spend an entire day there and like sketch the sculptures. And again, I'm, get, I'm getting all artsy on you, but, um, or just like, yeah, go to, go to a local like art show or, you know, get outside, go look at buildings, go look at nature. Like, oh gosh, I, I, so I always go into this. Like, <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. All of those things, like it's, and I think it, it takes having caught yourself in that Instagram trap before you, like you, ha it'll come to a point where you're like, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm looking at Instagram and I feel anxious. Why do I feel anxious? And then you realize like, okay, I'm in that trap. Got to fix it. Like find other ways to find inspiration and stuff like that. But I think that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> whole other, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know if it was like answering your question properly there, but I think it's, um, yeah, I think just, you have to, check yourself and don't just like get don't let yourself get absorbed and I, I do this all the time go down an instagram wormhole and that's how you're clicking from one thing to the other it's like spend a lot a certain amount of time to it follow a certain amount of art accounts or lettering accounts and then just kind of you know limit it scale it down a little bit yeah um, yeah but it's hard totally agree yeah. so the one last thing we didn't touch on that we probably should have touched on at the beginning is that you have a course a whole course on all of this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we probably should have mentioned that but i'll put a link in the uh, down below to your course um can you and there's a coupon code for it too that jody has given me so it's 20 percent off i think um so can you talk a little bit about what's in the course and how that all works yeah, so it's called the Calligraphy Style Masterclass, and it's like my baby, because um, this is something that I do feel very strongly about, as you guys can tell the way that I talk about it, like it's like, I'm like an emotional mess, but anyway, um, I, yeah, I feel very strongly about helping people find their calligraphy style, so in the course, we really go through um, the, these steps that we have here, so like practicing, um, analyzing, experimenting, repeat, and all that stuff, but like really go into like how to set up your practice, um, what the different stylistic elements are and how you can explore them. Um, I also have a whole thing on like um, different like kind of intermediate techniques. So like um, watercolor with pointed pen, which is interesting. I think I do it in a really weird way. So I hope it's easy to understand. Um, but also I kind of cover different tools that you can experiment with, um, how to mix like custom inks and things like that. So, um, cause I think that style is, made up of so many different things so it's kind of it's it's four sections and you really go through the process of like and there is a section on rules um just like a little rule refresher and then but like 
parallel to that kind of like here, here are the rules and here's how you could break them kind of thing. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it's like, I'm very proud of it. I think it's, it, it would have been nice to, like we were saying before, it's like when you create something that you wish had existed, it's, it's, it would have been nice to have for me back in the day. Cause I think that I was very mindful about developing my style, but it also took me an extremely long time to get to a point where I felt like it was really unique and really my own. Um, I think I could have gotten there a little faster if I'd had more of a guide and more of a, like a, a way of, of working that, that allowed me to explore it, um, more mindfully. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the, I should just call this, this, this talk mindful art with Jody. Art with Jody. Yeah. I need to be wearing like a shawl and like enormous glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I need to just do my, my aesthetic needs to be more like crazy old lady art teacher. Cause that's I it. love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So there's going to be a full blog post written about this conversation, but if you go to my website right now and I'll put the link right here, um, my website slash Jody's name, which is Jody, and it's actually Jody Dash. And how do you say your last name? Uh, Tellier. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I that's what I assumed because Canada yeah. and Canada. French. Yeah. But no, I know it's 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 a hard one. <laughs> if it was anyone in the states, it would be Tellier. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Tellier. They just forget the eyes there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So the happyevercrafter dot com slash Jody Dash Tellier. And right now it'll show you just a link to Jody's course and the coupon code that you can grab if you want to check it out. Um, yeah. But soon, shortly, probably by the time some people are watching this, there will be a full blog post explaining all of it too. Yeah. And where else can people find you, Jody, if they want to check out more about you? Yeah. So, I mean, the website, sundayartco.com or obviously on Instagram, um, sundayartco. I just got to 7,000 followers, which I'm very excited about. Yay! So Amazing. Healthy, fun. I post a lot of pictures of my dog and videos of my dog. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then I do. I mentioned the, the other course quickly, if it's okay. Um, but yeah, you know Sylvia. You had her on recently, and um, you guys probably know Sylvia Wong of Via Calligraphy. We just put out another course, an online course about um, starting a business, and uh, it's called the Badass Brand Academy. <laughs> And it's all about like building a, a really strong brand so that you can attract the kind of clients who don't question your value and kind of taking your creative hobby and turning it into like a high end business. That's another kind of resource that I wish had existed back in the day. But this is a little crazy last minute. The enrollment for the first semester of it is closing tomorrow. So I don't know, it might be a little last minute for people, but um, we're going to do it again eventually. Um, I like how you have your show me your drills in like semesters. So we kind of were inspired and we're like, maybe we'll have a semester and make it very like official. Um, so. Yeah, there are pros and cons to all of that. But again, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> so many topics. I feel like we could chat all day. That's, that's the beauty of these conversations. Every time I get on here with any artist, I'm like, I feel like we could just yeah. I can stop recording and we can just sit here and chat all day. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jody. I think this will be really helpful for people and kind of encouraging that it's not, it doesn't have to be such a stressful thing to find your style or yeah. a, it, it doesn't have to be like an instant find your style and then go with it kind of thing. Exactly. It's an ongoing process. For sure. Um, thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. All righty. We will talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.